to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually in the tabernacle of the congregation, and it shall be a statute forever in your generations. The Eternal Light. The National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations present The Eternal Light. This public service program comes to you under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. Our story today, written by Morton Wishengrad, features Isabel Merson as Henrietta Zold. Following the dramatic portion of the program, you will hear a talk by Mrs. Moses P. Epstein. In the Valley of Jezreel, the Kaddish is sung today for Henrietta Zold. Where the Jaffa Road is stored with anemones, the children are gathered to say the mourner's prayer. North in Galilee and south in Hebron and eastward to the Salt Sea, the voices of the children are rising. Yiskadal ve Yiskadash, Shemei Rabo. They were the unbefriended, and then she came. Now they sing the Kaddish for her. For they were the forsaken children of Europe, the offscourings of Germany. And it was she who made for them a sanctuary in Zion. In Petach Tikva, it is April. And in Tiberias, a nightingale will linger in the sky. But the children say, Yiskadal ve Yiskadash. For this is the long season of their emptiness and their remembering. Can five words create a legend? Perhaps you will not think so. In the year 1912, Mr. Nathan Strauss could not foresee the legend. Nevertheless, he stared with amusement at the tip of his cigar and uttered the five words. Miss Henrietta Zold of Hadassah. Well, Mr. Strauss? I know you, Henrietta, but what's Hadassah? We met on Purim. Esther's name in Hebrew is Hadassah. So we called our women's organization Adasa. It is very simple. Oh, I see. Now that your organization has a name, uh, what do you do with it? Jeremiah 8.22. Henrietta, are you going to make me get up and hunt through my Bible, or are you going to tell me? Oh, I'll tell you. Well? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why, then, is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? All right, Henrietta. You've given me the text like a good rabbi's daughter. Now deliver the sermon. There isn't any sermon, Mr. Strauss. My mother and I visited the Jewish settlements of Palestine. We saw a land that was barren and treeless and fantastically beautiful. But we saw Jewish mothers dying in childbirth. We saw infants spindly with rickets. And we saw children whose eyes were granular with disease. And you want to do something about it? Yes. Visiting nurses first. Then a nurse's training school. Then hospitals. Mm. How much uh, money have you raised? Two hundred and eighty-three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I shouldn't laugh, should I? You're quite right. It sounds ridiculous. But we're just a handful of women, and we gave what we could. Why don't you ask me for help, Henrietta? 
I can only explain a need. If you see it and feel an obligation to help, we'll be grateful. God bless you, Henrietta. You ask for help proudly. That's the way it should always be done. I'm glad to help with you and Hadassah. Someday there may be bomb in Gilead. Nathan Strauss's help was passage for two American nurses. During the years of the First World War, other nurses followed, and then a small contingent of American doctors. The work was slow and painful and heartbreaking, but it did not falter. In 1920, Henrietta Zold paid a last visit to her native Maryland and set sail for Palestine. And she came into a land befallen with sickness. That's the enemy, Miss Zold. Don't let her sting you. I shan't, Dr. Rubno. Yes, the Anopheles mosquito. That's the enemy. One dead mosquito and there are billions alive. Medical services are crippled, the whole staff working on malaria. I'm almost ready to quit, Miss Zold. You need some rest, Dr. Rubno. I need more assistance. That's what I need. Oh, I... I'm sorry I didn't mean to bark at you. Thank God you've come, Miss Zold. You've got plenty to do. I'm Riva, Miss Zold. I'll show you around. Thank you, Riva. But I'd rather study these charts for now. Miss Zold, I'll tell you something that isn't on the chart. Yes? 300 immigrants came through the port of Jaffa last week. Less than 100 are still standing. Malaria? Over 200 of them. Chills and fever and the terrible sweat and chills and fever all over again. They burn inside and the skin gets blue and cold. The land isn't worth it, Miss Old. It just isn't worth it. And ye shall be as a terebinth whose leaf fadeth, and as a garden that hath no water. And the strong shall be as tow, and his work as a spark. And they shall both band together, and none shall quench them. Yes, that's it. It's just as it says. Why did you come here, Miss Ald? Because in the same verse of Isaiah it is written, And I will turn my hand upon thee, and purge away thy drosses with lie, and thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, and Zion shall be redeemed with justice. You say the words is... As though they were written on the chart. They are written on the chart, Reva. In my heart, I know they are. There is no birth without pain. And this was a land in the making. For 13 years, Henrietta Zold traveled from Hebron to Galilee... And as she grew older, she seemed to work more, and more was given her to do. A time came when the Jewish settlements were no longer scourged by malaria, and children no longer sickened and died in their mother's arms. Thirteen ripe years for Henrietta Zold, and a land regenerated by the sweat of the new builders who came to Zion from the many nations. She smiled with satisfaction and made her decision. She sent for her new assistant. What have I done now, Miss Zold? Nothing at all, Doctor. Won't you sit down? If it's about that epidemic in the Safed Hospital, it just wasn't our fault. Some things can't be helped. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Doctor? Aren't you going to scold me? Should I? Of course. That epidemic was sheer negligence on our part. I never scold anyone, Doctor. No, of course not. You just... Just look at us and ask questions, and we scold ourselves. Oh, please be a good fellow and sit down. I have something to tell you. All right. Well? I've packed my things. I'm leaving. I want you to be in charge. Miss Zoll, I'm afraid I don't understand. It's simple enough. 
I'm going home. America? Maryland. But I thought you were happy here. I'm 72 years old, Doctor. 72 years old and homesick. I think I can understand that. I wonder, Doctor. You've never seen the woods in Maryland in the autumn. But I don't know what I'm going to tell the staff. Well, then tell them Miss Zold is tired of being an executive. Tell them I'm going back to America. I'm going to luxuriate in being old and decrepit, and I'm going to let my sisters cuddle me. And I'm going to kiss every blessed tree in Maryland. <laughs> Bags are locked, good and tight. Thank you, Reva. Shall I answer it, Miss Old? No, it's probably for me. Hello? Miss Old? Yes? There's an emergency meeting of the Vayad Lumi. Can you come right away? But I sent my resignation to the executive committee. I know. Can you come right away? You can't neglect that resignation. I'm really going home. Have you listened to the radio, Miss Old? I don't even own a radio. Well, it's on all stations. Adolf Hitler has just taken power in Germany. Thank you for calling me. I'll be at the meeting. I heard what he said. Did you, Reva? It couldn't come. But it has. Miss Zoll, what's going to happen? Where will the German Jews go? Every door is tight against them. Every door but Palestine. Today, Eva, Zionism has justified itself. Makes me want to cry. God in heaven, why do we have to be an eternal scapegoat? I don't know. I don't believe anyone knows. That's the worst of it. How can you remove a cause for persecution that cannot even be explained? Eva, will you help me unpack my bags? <laughs> Henrietta Zold unpacked her bags. She was beyond the three score and ten of the psalmist's term of life. But in the decade of the annihilation of reason, even the aged may have no certitude, no comfort, no rest. A storm broke over Europe, and darkness fell. And Zion prepared to receive the fugitives, while it turned to Henrietta Zold for direction. David, I'll depend on you for the census. Every cooperative and agricultural colony must be canvassed at once. Find out how many refugees they can conveniently take and then ask them to double the number. All right. I'll try, Miss Old. Shalami. Yes. I'll expect you to be at Haifa. Take a battery of psychologists if you have to and test every incoming man and woman. We've got to place them in your occupations. Are we going to make farm workers out of lawyers? I don't know. But we have to prepare them for a struggle from which they will not be spared. Ben Aaron. Yes? I'd like you to go to Tel Aviv. We'll have to build temporary barracks for, to house them. Where's the money going to come from? That's right. Where is it going to come from? Well, we shall do what we've always done. We will state the need and they will give. I know that. Israel does not fail. Well, the barracks won't be much, Miss Old, but good enough to keep out the rain. Thank you, Ben Aaron. I've worked up a schedule for the refugee children. They'll get up at six and march them to the square. Give them 20 minutes of calisthenics and march them back for breakfast. Allow 15 minutes for the meal. Then... Ben, Aaron, these are refugees from Hitler, not to Hitler. Huh? Suppose you let them decide what they want to do. But calisthenics are good for them. Don't you hate despotism, Ben, Aaron? Excuse me, Miss Old, but it's good for them. The despotism that does good is even worse than the despotism that does evil. I don't know. 
You can recognize the despotism that works evil. You detest it, you resist it. But this other thing, this thing that passes for good, it suffocates you even while it gathers strength. Ben Aaron, when I was a little girl in Baltimore, my father used to say that is the heart that leads the feet. Let's try my father's way. Follow where the heart leads. This was enough for Henrietta Sold. Now, inevitably, her heart led to the children of Germany, whom Adolf Hitler had appointed for destruction. In 1934, Henrietta Sold cabled to American Hadassah, and the plan emerged for the Youth Aliga, the migration of the children out of Germany into Palestine. The detachments of the children the pitiful brigades began to come. But there were more who could not come. In her 75th year, almost in the hour when Adolf Hitler stood in Nuremberg and proclaimed the law of the paria, Henrietta Zold stepped unobtrusively into Berlin. To the other blind men are. Did anyone see you come here, Frau No, Herr Seligson, I don't think so. You were running, yes? Your cheeks are pink, Frau Zold. At 75, one does not run. No, I didn't run, Frau Seligson. She is right. Your cheeks are pink. <laughs> I suspect I'm a fool. But out there, I felt like the heroine of a novel. So? Oh, please forgive me. You got my note. You know why I'm here. Yes, we know. We have spoken to the entire congregation. Good. And you will let me make arrangements to take your children away? We all agree. Seven hundred and fifty children, Frau Solt. We have decided that you should take them. I wish it was in our power to take their fathers and mothers. We know you can't. I lived on a farm when I was a girl, Frau Solt. There were bad times, but no matter how bad, my father never let us eat the seed potatoes. You cannot eat the seed. It must always be saved for the new planting. You're a very brave woman, Frau Sirixa. Am I? I'm a mother. With you, my children will be safe. Thank you. You see, we have met, we have talked, we have given you our children, and we have not wept, Frau Sold. Because our children will not be motherless. You will be their mother. I will kiss you now, please. And in Palestine, you will kiss them for me. She returned to Palestine, and 750 children followed. The youth migrations continued, and the new tide began from Poland, and then from Czechoslovakia, the Netherlands, France, Denmark, Romania. A heartbreaking, agonizing byproduct of war. The hair was whiter on her head now. The voice was more gentle. She was 80 years old, but she did not flinch. The children came. 10,000 children. Children who made no sound and did not smile. What is your name? Clara. How old are you, please? Clara. Is that all you can say? Won't you answer me, Clara? Well, that's all right. You don't have to answer. She's been like that since she came. Yes, I know. Clara, I have something for you. Please take it. The doll is for you. It's yours to play with. Mine? Yes. To keep. There. That's a good girl. Now come with me, Clara, and we'll play together. Miss Old. 
it's all you'd better come. Is she sick? No, she's playing. She dug a hole in the sand. You'd better see for herself. She's playing with her doll. All right, I'll come. Rest in peace, Dolly. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Dolly. Rest in peace. She keeps burying the doll Rest and saying that. Peace, Stop her, Miss Orr. No, Reva. She ought to please the life Rest she knows. Peace, Let her alone. Rest in peace. I, I can't stand it. Please forgive me, but I can't stand it. I just can't. <laughs> Rest in peace, Dolly. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Dolly. Rest in peace. Miss Old, you have nothing to be ashamed of, Eva. Well, I, I'm sorry I broke down. She's crying over the doll now. That's good. Is it? Yes. It's good for her to cry. The tears will cleanse her the way salt cleanses me. Tears can heal, Reva. If she'll take it later, give her something to eat and then put her to bed. I'll try to see her before she goes to sleep. Will you do something for me, Clara? Yes. When I was a little girl, my mother taught me a night prayer. I used to say it every night. I used to say it, too. Then say it with me, Clara. Say it with me now. All right. Blessed, Blessed art, art thou, thou O Lord our, our God, God, King of, of the universe, universe, who makest the bands of sleep to fall upon mine eyes and slumber upon mine eyelids. May it be thy will, O Lord my God, and God, God of my, my fathers, to suffer me to lie down in peace and to let me rise up again in peace. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Good night, Clara. Good night. Miss Old. Yes, Clara? What will we do tomorrow? Anything you wish. Anything? Yes, Clara. Tomorrow you can do anything you have the heart to do. Tomorrow belongs to you. of Jezreel, the Kaddish is sung today, the immemorial prayer of the mourners. For two months ago, the word came down Mount Scopus that Henrietta Zold lay dead in her 84th year. Yiskadal ve Yiskadash, Shemei Rabo. Two months ago, no signal was given, but streaming toward Jerusalem came a vast concourse of children, off scourings and parias of Europe the new children of Zion. From Galilee in the north they came, and westward to Jerusalem from the Salt Sea. Children in the thousands holding each other by the hand, streaming across Palestinian highways. They will sing the Kaddish for a long season, for the end of mourning is not at hand. Yet it will come. And to one another the children of Henrietta Zold will say in Zion, O house of Jacob, 
come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Copies of the script you have just heard, as well as the talk which follows immediately, may be obtained free of cost by writing to the Eternal Light, 3080 Broadway, New York, 27, New York. And now we present a brief talk by Mrs. Moses B. Epstein, National President of Hadassah. Mrs. Epstein. The healing of the daughter of my people. This is the motto which Henrietta Zold found in the book of Jeremiah 33 years ago and gave to Hadassah as a symbol and a goal. In this phrase can be found the cue to the amalgam which was her life. It speaks for us still of the clarity of her mind, the greatness of her heart, the richness of her faith in Judaism. Visionary, fighter, organizer, she was above all else a healer of the daughter of her people. Henrietta Zold believed passionately in the resurgence of the Jewish people in Palestine, their ancient home. And when the Balfour Declaration was issued after the last war, when the masses began to return to Eretz Yisrael, she knew that to make that homecoming good, the country must be reborn as a healthy and democratic land. We know now how well she built. We see now when our people, decimated by homelessness and suffering, reduced by starvation and murder, lift their faces once again to the land of their fathers, that the warmth of her faith has been sown as a seed on the hills and in the valleys which nourished that faith centuries ago. In every colony and on every street in Palestine today, Walk young men and women, growing boys and girls who were like saplings broken in the storm, who might have been blighted and thrown on the dust heap of the world, but for her. In every corner of Eretz Israel, there stands some sign of the work of this American woman. A great medical center outside of Jerusalem, near to that Mount of Olives where she lies at rest. Welfare stations, playgrounds, kitchens, schools, homes and colonies for refugee children. Forests planted in her name, institutions grounded on her principles. These are the palpable results of her faith. Henrietta Zoll taught Hadassah that the good builder lays foundations which will not tremble under the feet of generations yet to come. She showed us how Palestine must be ready for the job it is doing today. For the gathering in, the healing, the teaching, the social and economic fusion of those multiple currents which are the Jewish people. If Palestine has taken in more Jewish exiles than any other land, if Palestine has succeeded almost miraculously in healing the wounds of the remnant of Jewish youth, if Palestine is ready to become a member of the family of nations, then we owe much of this in no small measure to that frail, that dauntless, that human and humorous, that wise and passionately dedicated daughter in Israel, Henrietta Zoll. Thank you, Mrs. Epstein. The Eternal Light is written by Morton Wishingrad. The music was composed by Henry Brandt and conducted by Milton Catums. Isabel Merson appeared as Her Henrietta Zold, and Alexander Scorby was the narrator. Cantor David Putterman sang the liturgical music. The entire production was under the direction of Ira Avery. This program came to you as a public service of the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations, and was presented under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. Free copies of the script may be obtained by writing to the Eternal Light, 3080 Broadway, New York, 27, New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm -hmm.